that was, that's a, was a very hard thing to convince me that I could say I was an artist. I know the basis for my modesty about that uh, was because I was drawing, and because I was drawing black and white, and because I'm drawing the figure. And uh, at the time that I started this in the 60s, uh, we were suddenly into acrylics and uh, the painters that I knew, some of them, went into acrylic painting and uh, I was still drawing the figure and I was still um, attached to the model. I had not yet uh, drawn from my own imagination and so they had no real interest in the figure they were experimenting with all sorts of things and i was just doing this boring thing and also i loved black and white and that just what didn't wasn't a hit so i didn't think i was doing anything um that was memorable or anything that was part of the gang i've never been a painter i don't consider myself a painter i'm a draftsman i draw and I draw with different. I draw with a brush. I draw with ink. Now, I never worked with color. I worked um, strictly black and white. I think still think black and white is magnificent, and it will come come back very quickly. It fascinated me how many people were afraid of black and white. Um, that people immediate. I resented painters because people respond immediately to color. And you don't know whether there's drawing going on there. You don't know whether there's sculpture, a sense of sculpture in the work. All you know is it's red, yellow, and blue, and it's marvelous. So I resent that. I don't think that tells me anything. So I did not miss it. In black and white, it's multi-grays. It's not. I mean, you try to reproduce a black and white, you're in a lot of trouble with most printers. So at the time that I'm working on that, it's like a package. I'm doing that, and then suddenly, three months later, or three years later, I'm finished with it. In that period of time, I'm obsessed by it. The most important thing that happened for me was leaving the model behind and the tyranny of what I call the tyranny of the model because if you're in a classroom or you're in a room with uh, other people and there's always about 30 people who love to draw life do life drawing you're uh, you know it's the whim of the class do they want or short poses, do they want medium-sized poses, do they want long poses, and I wanted the long poses because I was really working on something, I wanted to have time. And you have a model who's watching the clock, and you either hear the clock ticking, or you're aware that she's uncomfortable, or something is going on, so it drove me absolutely crazy. It, the figures become my line, my connection. Uh, it's still there, but they're not modeled uh, from models, and I can do it any time I want, and I can dislocate arms, and I can distort. Distortion is, is the thing, so you can make, create this thing any way you want. There must be, when you're looking at a hand, you must know that's a hand, you know, not just, oh, well, that's supposed to be a hand, but you must have the feeling that there's a knuckle under there, and there's a connection, and often, you know, I know when it's not working for me. I know when the leg doesn't work or the foot doesn't look like a foot. Uh, I studied with a, a person I will name because I think he's the greatest teacher. His name was is John Gould, and he he ultimately what he was teaching us was to see. All you can do, he used to say, is teach the person to see. You see, you study, you see, and you take more in, and then it comes out. You assimilate it. I had reasons why I was doing things that upset people, uh, including him. I was dropping, cutting the leg off at a certain part, at the bottom of the page, and he said, you can't do that. And I said, yes, I can. And he said, well, if you're going to do that, then you better do it proper, do it really well. And that was the last class I had with John, and that's what I was going off to do, was to do something else. And he once came into my studio and saw all these drawings up on the wall and said, you know, one day, Claire, you may find that you don't want to draw the body at all, ever again. And it's never happened. It didn't happen for him, and it's never happened for me.
but what happened was I finally one day read some love letters that somebody had written to someone. And I started to imagine, it was very powerful images. And I didn't have a model. So I just sat down and just drew everything that I thought I had read. Everything I thought, I became a part of it. There were th always three people in it when I was the voyeur. And those drawings I st were shown uh, to friends who thought they were wonderful. And I think from that day on, I've been in heaven. Everything I learned in the 20 years that I've worked with a model is there. I mean, in fact, you can't give up what you haven't already learned or studied or worked hard at. There were 90 erotic drawings, we called them. I really don't think they were erotic. I think they were sexual. There may have been one or two of them that were actually, but that's not what eroticism is. They weren't meant to excite and to stimulate. They're just a story. I didn't consider, and I don't consider, uh, the subject matter of erotic drawings or sexual acts between people or drawings that I might do that are erotic to other people, uh, taking a special as a special effort. Uh, it it isn't. I, when I uh, the most painful, <laughs> the most difficult of a, of the series that I did was difficult. Not because uh, I was doing people in different positions or uh, you know contemplating sex and sexual acts, it was the people themselves that were posing, which is why models are impossible. You're dealing with human beings and, and you become the voyeur. I'm suddenly aware there's one, one uh, monoprint that we have that we were looking at yesterday and it's going into my next show and I realize now, looking at it, the placement of one hand and the area on the other body that the hand is placed is all purely uh, accidental in, in a way. I am determinedly filling and di dividing the space. My, when I'm working, I'm working with space. I'm working with space and this uh, peculiar brush or whatever it is I'm using, which is always an impediment. And so I'm dealing, trying to control that with that space and make some kind of, a, uh, perhaps the design is too easy a word. So now I look at it and I see that I placed the big heavy hand there because I was looking at weight. I was looking at it, the weight of the hand, the weight of the hand there, and the white space around it, and that's what I'm balancing. But instead, it's in her crotch. So now we can look at it and say, this guy's, you know, 